All right, let's get started. So first, let me introduce myself. My name is Tim Linger. I'm a certified reverse mortgage professional, CRMP. I'm one of 150 CRMPs in the entire country. And if I can brag about myself, I'm an expert of experts. I've been in the HECM reverse mortgage industry for almost 20 years. Certified senior advisor. I'm the president, founder, or co-founder and CEO of the Heckam Association, which is a realtor trade association to promote the Heckam, the FHA safe type of reverse mortgage. I'm also the broker owner of Heckam Senior Home Financing, which makes me a loan officer, which makes me really good education source because I have been in the ditches for years. I started off as a refinance reverse mortgage provider, in particular Heckam's, and I have moved into the purchase space. I absolutely love the Heckam for home purchase. Today's class is about reverse mortgages in general, but in particular about the FHA safe type of reverse mortgage called the Home Equity Conversion Mortgage or HECM. And then in particular, we're going to be talking about the purchase HECM. You as realtors need to learn about how to sell homes and what type of loan product or cash that can be used to purchase a home. And then one step further, we've decided to call this the morals and ethics of the Heckam for Home Purchase. And the reason for that is because I believe strongly that the best citizens of America, the greatest generation, is our elders. This is where they have worked approximately 50 years of their lives to accumulate something. And now they're ready to retire and ideally retire to Florida. I often say, if you could pick any place in America to sell homes, where would it be? Probably right where you are. And then to do a niche marketing for senior citizens. This is ground zero. Lee County, for an example, 31% senior citizens, meaning 62 and above. If you had to pick any place in Florida to live that has the most seniors per capita, it's most likely Lee County. The state of Florida has approximately 24% senior citizens, meaning those over 62 and above. Home ownership is very high. In Lee County, home ownership is 70%. Across the state of Florida, it's about, I'm, I'm sorry, for senior citizens is about 80%. So you've got the best of the best. So let's get started on the morals and ethics of the Heckam for Home Purchase. So my joke is, what the heck is a Heckam? Home Equity Conversion Mortgage, insured by FHA. Let's go back. Just to give you a brief overview, overview, we're not going to get into details of each one of these slides. The handouts will be provided after the webinar via your email. So there's various types of reverse mortgages. They've been around since 1961 in this country and probably even older than that, just not documented. The reverse mortgage type of loan was written in 1961 by Nelson Hayes of Deering Savings Loan. And the story goes is, is Nellie Young is a widow went to her banker and said, I've lost my husband, I need some cash. And the banker with credit says, well, I'm not sure that we can help you. But after conversing, they decided that if she was to sign the deed over to the bank, perhaps the bank could give her some cash. And there was the birth of the very first reverse mortgage. So moving on to 1969, at a congressional hearing, 
the concept of this reverse mortgage intrigues, intrigues the Senate Committee on Aging. The UCLA professor testified and the Senate chairman was impressed. In the 80s, congressional hearings were held. Senator John Hines absolutely loves the, the idea of, of using home equity to subsidize our elders. And he proposed that we have FHA insure the loan. In 1984, the American Homestead sets the foundation for government insured reverse mortgages. It unveils a, a program called the Century Plan. In 87, Congress passes the FHA insurance bill, and we introduce the FHA HECM reverse mortgage as a pilot program. So once again, the FHA HECM is a type of reverse mortgage. It was signed into law by, in 1988 by Ronald Reagan. Back then, it was strictly a refinance. Today, we have a purchase program. And once again, today, we're talking about the FHA HECM for home purchase primarily. But the reason I'm spending some time on these slides is I want you as professional realtors to get the word reverse mortgage out of your language the best you can. And the reason is because of what the video said at the beginning of this webinar is reverse mortgages have typically a bad name. What's disturbing is in you know, 30 years after the program began in the 60s, FHA designed a program to kill the bad reverse mortgages. And they were bad, some were good. This is basically where the bank took their house in exchange for money. So FHA came out with a program to eliminate the bank taking the house and just made this a mortgage. A mortgage is a mortgage is a mortgage. We all know how mortgages work. And the FHA HECM is a mortgage. So let me just define a mortgage real quick in, in the simplest of terms. A mortgage is where someone buys a house, borrows money from a bank, the bank has a lien against the house, but the person owns the house. And as owner of the house, they pay the taxes, the insurance, the upkeep. If they sell the house the very next day, they make a profit, if they sell for a profit. If they sell the house the next day for a loss, they take a loss. The bank just wants their money back. So sort of remember that. A mortgage is a mortgage is a mortgage. So when someone says reverse mortgages are bad, hmm, which type are you talking about? The kind that takes your house or the FHA safe type, the HECM? So pros and cons here. You as realtors are going to be talking about the HECM. And as you're talking about the HECM, which we'll explain in detail in the next almost three hours, if the word reverse mortgage comes up, this is a reverse mortgage. Absolutely is a reverse mortgage. But it's a different type of reverse mortgage. It's the FHA safe type. So we'll get into more in just a moment. Let's talk about 2008, 2009, and 2010. So FHA authorized to ensure the HECM for home purchase under the Housing and Economic Recovery Act of 2008. They released a mortgagee letter, which is our Bible in our industry, ML08 standing for 2008 and 33 meaning the 33rd ML letter for the year, officially implementing this new program. So we've taken a program, HECM for refinance and turned it into a HECM for home purchase. The program was released in 2009 and it wasn't until 2010 until we closed our very first, funded our very first HECM for home purchase. Exciting times. So this program has been around for just about nine years. We can still call it new, especially new because the purchase program is still getting traction. Most realtors, according to NAR, 97% of realtors still have not heard about this program. And yet it's been around for almost a decade. So let me do some analogies. Reverse mortgages, in general terms, is like a breed of a dog, like a poodle or a cocker spaniel, Labrador. So yes, there's lots of dogs out there, and yes, there's some bad types of dogs. There's also some nice type of dogs, good kind of dogs. Let's use a fruit as an example. A lemon or a grapefruit might be sour, or a strawberry or a grape might be sweet. So I like to think of reverse mortgages as a category of types of loans and we offer the strawberry. The FHA HECM is the good type of reverse mortgage. So once again, the HECM is a type of reverse mortgage, but not only, not the only reverse mortgage. The HECM happens to be the best and the safest. It's sponsored by HUD, it's insured by FHA. It does have a fantastic reputation and an amazing satisfaction rate. According to AARP, 96% of 
of people who have completed a Hackam are satisfied. The naysayers are the ones who don't understand it. By the end of this class, you as realtors, you are going to love this program. You're going to be amazed, I promise you. So the term in the industry is no monthly mortgage payments. I'm sure you've heard that before. If you do a reverse mortgage, a HECM, there's no monthly mortgage payments. But you see where I inserted the word required. Interesting. I've come to realize that no means no, right? No means no. So no required monthly mortgage payments might be a better way of saying it, or maybe optional monthly mortgage payments. And the reason I want to drill this home is because some people say, which is also false, we'll prove this later on in the webinar, that if you do a reverse mortgage, a HECM, that one day you're going to owe more than the house is worth. Completely false. First of all, if that is to be true, which it's not, then it's their decision to have a rising debt loan. Remember, a typical mortgage is where a person makes a monthly payment for, say, 30 years. Having no required monthly payments means that payments are optional. If they choose not to make a monthly payment, the HECM loan will allow people to de defer their mortgage payments. That's all this is. This is a optional monthly mortgage payment loan. It's still a mortgage. They still owe the bank the money. They still own the house, but payments are optional. And if they choose to defer those payments for as long as their lifetime, and whatever lifetime is, 50 years, then the interest that's accumulating for that month will be added to the loan balance. I say that if a person is planning on living in the house for the rest of their life, who cares? The house will pay off the debt. When a person passes away, they're not taking it with them, correct? I often say, and you're going to hear, hear me say this over the next couple of hours, that cash is king in retirement. Cash and cash flow is king in retirement. Having a house that's completely paid for is fantastic feeling, but the real reason a person wants a house that's paid for is so they don't have monthly mortgage payments. So whether a HECM for home purchase or a refinance HECM, the FHO program is still the same. Hacking for purchase is where a buyer puts equity into the home to own it, to buy it, and has optional monthly mortgage payments. And a refi is where a person pulls money from a home they already, home, already own. And if they have a mortgage, we will extinguish that and give the homeowner the difference. I would typically say, is there any questions? But currently, I don't have audio input. Jen was considering having someone call in the number and if someone has a question you can certainly give that a try so let's go back to recap general terms reverse mortgages are a type of loan that has no required monthly mortgage payments it's not necessarily the fha type of reverse mortgage reverse mortgages once again is a category of loans the fd ftc recognizes three basic types the fha HECM, which is the best and safest the single pur purpose reverse mortgage, which is usually a property tax deferral, or proprietary, which means private, and they're usually offered by lenders or banks, and they're typically jumbo loans. Typically, the house needs to be in excess of a million dollars. There are proprietary types that will start at 400000 but when they're competing against the HECM, they're, it's really hard to, to beat the federal program. So let's get started. This class is mostly about the FHA HECM for home purchase. Once again, we're going to dabble in the other types of reverse mortgages, including the, the HECM refi. So when your senior client says, I want to pay cash for my home, what they're really saying is that I don't want a mortgage payment. Fair enough? What the senior is really saying is I don't want a mortgage payment. No one really wants to give up all their cash but your client is willing to give up their cash in order not to have a mortgage payment. Fair enough? Seniors should have access to funds in retirement. Cash should never be locked up. Depleting a nest egg to avoid a mortgage payment could and probably will spell disaster in the coming years. The down payment for the HECM for home purchase is approximately 60, maybe as low as 50% of the purchase price. Age has its benefits, the smaller down payment a smaller down payment is required for the older ages. What's interesting, I was talking to a realtor recently and because this program starts at age 62, that's the youngest person, the borrower must be at least 62, 
a lot of people think that 62 year olds buy houses and and of course they do but the average age for a heckam is actually in the 70s mid 70s and we are doing loans all the time for people in their 80s and i've had realtors say what do you mean 80 year olds don't buy houses oh yes they do yes they do many many seniors buy houses in their older ages we have done loans for people in their 90s for various reasons so the rhetorical question of the day how many homes to seniors could you sell if all the homes were just about half cost half down payment maybe 60 percent now think about this if someone comes to you with two hundred thousand dollars cash money they want to pay cash for a house and you can tell they're 62 and above. And by the way, you are allowed to ask, are you 62 and above? Because this program discriminates in a positive way for our seniors, discriminates against younger people. Let's put it that way. So if they have $200,000 in cash and they're 62 and above, what's the first thing that enters your mind? They wanna pay cash for a house. The first thing that enters your mind is, where am I going to find a house that they want to purchase for 200,000? They've already told you they want water view, they want golf course, they want a 55 plus community, they want they want a single story house with modern conveniences, two car garage and potentially um, future handicapped accessible. And your mind just sort of gets discouraged. But then you remember that you came to this class, the Heckam for home purchase. And now you can sell them a 300, maybe a $350,000 house for the same $200,000. Think about that. Think about what that does to your commission. Think about what that does for your client who is now able to buy the house that they really wanted. And think about all the people they associate with that are also 62 and above. This is a non-recourse loan. This means that one can never owe more than the house is worth, ever. Not the borrowers, not your client, not the spouse, not the heirs, not the estate. Everyone is protected. Even the lender is protected. Once again, the HECM is the safest loan in America. So let's talk more about the non-recourse. What that means is that FHA is going to insure this loan, is going to guarantee it. If something bad were to happen, the lender were to fail, FHA will step in and be the lender. If the home were to go down in value, which is not likely to happen, but it did in 2008, 9, 10, and 11, what if one day when your clients were done with the home and they found out that the house is not worth what they owe? So let's use the example. They purchased a $350,000 house and we have another housing recession, let's say in 10 years. The amount that they borrowed was maybe $200,000, interest accumulating at around 5%. Let's just say, without doing the math, that they owe $300,000 after 10 years, 275, whatever that number is. But the house is only worth 200,000, possible scenario. This is where FHA says that when the family is done with the house, when the borrowers are done, FHA will make up any losses. The heirs could come in, take the furniture, the Cadillac out of the driveway, all the money in the bank, and hand the keys back to FHA and say, we don't want the house anyways. And in most cases, the kids don't want the house. They, they want the money. But what if they did want the house? What if they did want the house? FHA will allow them to have a clear title for 95% of the current value. So 95, for this example, 95% of the $200,000 current value. Even though the estate might owe, might owe 275,000, FHA will give the family the option of getting a clear title for 95 cents of the on the dollar based on the current value. It's really a win-win-win. You cannot be hurt by this kind of a loan. So when is this loan due? When the borrower or the borrower's spouse permanently ceases to live in the property. When the borrower or non-borrowing spouse sells or changes title. So we're going to be having a slide coming up real soon about the non-borrowing spouse. But real brief, a non-borrowing spouse is somebody who is not eligible to be part of the main transaction. So let's say a 62-year-old is married to a 60-year-old. 
the 60 year old would be a non borrowing spouse. However, they are part of the transaction. They are protected. They do have the protections that are in place for the borrower. It's just that when the law was written in 1988, 87, the borrower had to be 62 and above. In 2014, FHA amended this and allowed for people under age, all the way down to age 18, to be part of the deal just not officially a borrower they would be a non-borrowing spouse but they do have the protections so the loan is due when the last remaining spouse or borrower passes away or they fail to comply with the terms of the mortgage contract in other words they have to pay the property taxes the homeowner's insurance any association dues upkeep of the house so eligibility they must be 62 Spouses can be as young as age 18. Yeah, I kid you not. I have a client that was 72, I believe, married to a 25-year-old. True story. And good news is she married somebody with a few extra dollars and he married somebody younger. Win-win for them. Disadvantage is, is that we're going to base the loan amount, how much FHA is willing to lend on the younger person. And the reason is because they're going to live longer. So if he, as a 70 year old, were to pass away before her, which is most likely because he's a man and he's older, then she can live there for the rest of her life. And at age 25, that could be another 75 years with no required mortgage payments. The unfortunate part is the loan to value might only be 20%. So they could purchase a $200,000 home for approximately $160,000, but have no required mortgage payments for the rest of their life. It's still a fantastic deal. It's just a harder sale. So for properties, eligibility and requirements. Single family residents. Well, let me summarize it this way. Pretty much every property works single family homes all day long townhomes villas cluster homes modular homes all fine they can't be fixer uppers they got to be moving ready new construction can be done and we have a lot of clients that want a brand new home certainly we can get the process started they find a home they sign a sign a sales contract we can't do the loan application until we get closer to closing it might be six months later we can actually do the application before the co is issued but we cannot close the loan until after the co is issued here's what's exciting duplexes triplexes or even quadplexes are allowed so think about this you help your client into buying a duplex we do the heckam on the whole property they live in one side they rent out the other side now later in today's webinar we're going to be talking about the uh, certified financial planners thoughts on the heck of loan and retirement planning but just sort of think about that your client can buy a triplex a quadplex and encumber the whole property all four sides live in one and rent out the other three and have no required monthly mortgage payments and yet they'll have income now condominiums are a challenge they must be fha approved or approvable meaning that we have to get the board on board to get the application to FHA to get them approved. Now there's a whole story behind why most condos are not approved. Every condo should be FHA approved. In my opinion, in my very strong opinion, condos have a fiduciary responsibility, condo association, the boards have a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that every loan, that the, the building is marketable and every loan option should be available to their potential buyers. The more buyers, the higher the prices go. Fair enough? So what happened was is that most condos prior to 2011, before the meltdown, were FHA approved. But in 2000, and, and if they weren't approved, we could actually do spot condo approvals. In 2011, the condo market was in disaster. The whole housing market in America was a disaster. Condos were worse. If anybody was a realtor, or in the home business, buying business in 2011, you know how bad home prices were, and you could pick up a condo for almost nothing. The, the boards were in disarray, there was a lot of investors, there was a lot of uh, 
money and the reserves that had sort of vanished. It was just people were behind on their dues. FHA says, let's just erase, let's just eliminate every approved condo in America. I kid you not. Every condo woke up the next day with a non-approval. And then they needed to be reapproved. But remember, this is 2011, 2012, 2013. Condos were still a disaster. Boards were, were disbanded. Things were bad. So many condos didn't get re the, the, the application was not made. So they did not get reapproved. Meanwhile, fast forward another seven, eight or so years, and boards have sort of forgotten about the importance of being VA approved, FHA approved, Fannie Mae approved, and other lenders approved. So we are having the challenge now to go back and educate boards on the responsibilities that they have and why they should be FHA approved. And yes, it's a lot of work. Somebody has got to gather all the documents, the, the minutes, the budgets, the, the insurances, the master insurance, the fidelity bond, the rules of the condo have to be worded a certain way. Sometimes the board has to change some of the wording. It's, it's a challenge, but upwards of 60% of people looking to purchase homes, condos today, have considered or are using FHA financing. Interesting enough, a lot of loans are FHA, 3.5% down for most buyers. So to summarize this, is we cannot do a loan in a condo unless the building is approved by FHA. If you have some condos you'd like to work on, we can help you, the Heckam Association can help you in advance of getting that building approved so you can sell homes in that building. Manufactured homes, yes, we can do them. Whole bunch of rules, it has to be July of 1976 or newer, must be at least 400 square feet, which is not a problem, that's pretty small. Single wides are okay. Most lenders would prefer a 1990 or newer, which is fine because 1990 was 30 years ago. If you look at the bottom, it says must own the land. Well, we can do leaseholds, but I tell you, they're tough. They have to have very special wordings. The contract needs to, the, the lease must exceed their 150th birthday or be perpetual, meaning forever. It's tough to do leased land, especially manufactured homes on leased land. And manufactured homes in a land condo, yes, condominiums, <laughs> manufactured homes <laughs> on the ground, sometimes are in condos. That's just how they're titled. They're even more difficult. We can do them, but if your customer comes to you and says, I wanna buy a manufactured home, I would say to try to defer them to something that's going to appreciate in value, that doesn't have high lot rent, high land lease rent, encourage them to look elsewhere. If it happens to be their best interest to get a manufactured home, then let us, manufactured home in a condo or manufactured home on a leased land, let, it, let us look into it and see if we can help you. More times than not, it's not gonna work. Okay, moving on. Down payment funds. The basic rule is that you cannot borrow money to borrow money. I love that phrase. If your client says, yes, I can go to the bank and get a home equity line of, from my house in New York and I can use that money to buy this home in Florida for half down, 60% down using a HECM, the quick answer is no. So allowable down payment funds and sources, obviously checking, saving CDs, investments, pending a recent home sale, certainly they've got to sell the home, but we can get started down here. Once the house sells, we could actually have a morning closing on their on their primary, current, current primary home and have an afternoon closing on their home that they're buying. No seasoning requirement because they have the money. Retirement account withdrawals, so they can pull money from an IRA or 401k. They just cannot borrow it from themselves. I kid you not. And the reason is because they're now creating a monthly payment back to their investment account if they borrow it. So they can withdraw from it, but they cannot borrow even from themselves. From funds from the cash value of a whole life insurance policy. Yes, they can withdraw it from their life insurance and there's no seasoning requirements. Selling assets such as a vehicle or gold. Yes, I've had clients that have sold a vehicle and in particular he sold it on eBay and he had the money transferred via PayPal and we just had to track it back. We had to track it back to he owned the vehicle and then track the money, not a problem. And the reason I put gold in there is yes, I had a customer who had a whole bunch of gold bars in his safe. And that's hard to track, but fortunately he had the receipt from where he bought it. 
Each bar had a serial number on it. He had a receipt from where he sold it. Each bar had a serial number on it. Invoice had the serial number on it, and we were able to track it back. All we need is two months worth of tracking. Obviously, with gold, we had to show him where he bought it three years ago and and uh, sold it recently. So the nice thing about this Heckam is we have a different set of rules than any other loan that you think you might know of. I almost want you to say, if you think you understand FHA financing, just clear your head, clear your head, because we have a different set of rules. For an example, gifts, gifts of money can come from family, yay. Even more important, can come from friends, yay-er, right? Two thumbs up to that. Gift money can come from family or friends. We have to document why they're friends, how are they friends, high school friends, friends from three years ago, whatever that is. But if someone wants to give away money, we will accept it as a gift. That's good. So non-allowable funds, cannot borrow down payment funds. No home equity loan from second home. Let's see the little asterisks, we'll come back to that. Any type of subordinate financing, such as first time home buyer, where the county or some government or some charity gives away 10, 20, $30,000 to help someone buy a home. First time home buyer assistance program, personal loans or advances on credit cards. In other words, don't use your credit card to put the earnest money down, because that's borrowing. Loans against anything, including 401ks, even life insurance. If it's a borrowed money, the answer is no. All funds must be seasoned for at least two months. So you can see the asterisks. So technically you could borrow the money two months ago, put it in your checking savings account and, and season it in our world. However, and it is allowed, it is allowed, but when we pull the credit, and by the way, we don't have a credit score requirement, we'll get into that later, but we do have credit requirements. We have a financial assessment. We are gonna see that if they have taken a home equity loan from another home, we're gonna see that that's on the credit report and we're gonna ask questions about that. And when it comes, we're gonna make sure they can afford to make that payment and the property tax on another home and the payments to that loan. But as long as the money has been sourced for two months, we're not going to deny the usage of that. Creates a whole nother set of problems, don't recommend it, but I'm just, throwing out some options that is allowed. Now we're gonna have a break in about 20 minutes, maybe 17 minutes. So if I can get everyone's attention until then, I would appreciate it. And then we'll play that video again while people are taking a break. So out of pocket cost, heck them for home purchase. So FHA appraisal fee is approximately $495. Number could go up if it is a more expensive home or an unusual property. HUD counseling, I like to say it's 125, give or take five dollars. So because this is an FHA loan, we are required. Your clients are required to go through a nonprofit housing agency to go over the program officially with a neutral third party to get a certificate of counseling. So certainly the loan officer will go in detail with your clients and explain everything that they need to know, as I like to say, the good, the bad, and the ugly, to go over the whole program in detail. But we still have to go through a nonprofit counseling agency to get the certificate. So the cost is approximately $125, and the appraisal cost is around $500. Most of the other closing costs are going to be rolled into the loan. Now, they are... The down payment is going to be 50 to 60 percent, depending on their age, plus the closing cost. And the closing cost has to be or can be financed into the loan, but it, but it is going to have to be factored in as, as part of their down payment. So traditional FHA loan costs become part of the loan. Normal closing costs, third party fees, title, various types of taxes, uh, including stamps, mortgage, recording fees, land survey, things like that. FHA. PMI, we call it MIP because, you know, we sort of do things in reverse in our world. It's 2% of the purchase price. So remember, this FHA loan is different than pretty much anything that you know of. We pretty much base the fees off of the purchase price of the home. FHA's insurance fee is based on the purchase price. So 2% on a $200,000 house, FHA is going to charge a $4,000 MIP charge that's going to be put into the loan, usually financed into the loan, but it is a cost of doing business. The origination fee is going to be 2% of the 
of the purchase price, but with some limitations. So rather than get into the details of how that calculation is done, the maximum amount a lender can charge for an origination fee, and I like to call it points really, and I'll explain that in a moment, is $6,000. So on a $200,000 house, 2% is $4,000. $4,000 to FHA, $4,000 to the lender. And then for any house above $200,000, the, the fee goes down. The lender can't charge as much. And again, the cap is $6,000. Now look at the very, very bottom. It says example 626,525. That is the most FHA will consider the house to be worth when it comes to the calculation of their fee and for the calculation of the loan to value. We'll get into that in a couple of slides forward. That's an important number. So let me just say it another way. You as realtors can sell a house for $726,000 and we can finance approximately 50% of that home. Half cost homes as I like to call it. You can certainly sell homes for more than that and the math will work out a little different, but think about that. How many homes could you, how many $700,000 homes could you sell if all $700,000 homes were approximately 50 or 60% down? Oh, this is my most exciting part of that in marketing. Certified financial planners. Oh. We have about 10 to 13 minutes before break. Um, I really want to get into this. This will probably take me at least 13 minutes. There has been many exhaustive studies about if a heck of makes sense in retirement. And the answer is almost 100% of the time, yes. We have a lot of people that said, I have money. I could write a check for $400,000 today and pay cash for that house and still have money in the bank. I don't need it half cost homes. It's easy to say, especially when you're 62 and life is good. Maybe at 62, you're still working, your spouse is working, your credit score is really high, you have employment income, you have potentially social security income, either coming now or coming later, you have investments, the stock market's doing well, the economy's fine. But do you think in the next 30 years that things are gonna change? Do you think that it's possible that one of the spouses We'll have long-term health care issues. Maybe money will go out. Maybe the house needs repairs, a $20,000 roof. Maybe you need to buy a $30,000 car. Maybe the stock market doesn't do it quite so well. The economy uh, suffers a little bit. What if the interest rates were 1% at banks once again? So when you really dig into a person's financial and, and, a, and a financial planner gets involved and they, and they plan out the what-if scenarios, planners goal is to make a person's money last till age 95 or 100. Do you really think that someone, no matter how wealthy they are in their lifestyle, can take their assets and stretch another 30 years of not working times two people? So the second bullet point, the Heckam mortgage extends the financial portfolio out many years. And depending on a person's wealth, their financial plan almost almost guarantees that, that they're not going to run out of money. The CPA, CFPs love the lack of required monthly mortgage payments. Remember, I like to use the word optional mortgage payments because if someone is really doing that well, they could make mortgage payments. Interest rates are around 5%. They're reasonable. If they really are doing well, maybe you can help them into that $400,000 house. Depending on their age, they put down $200,000, $220,000 deposit. They finance the difference, and then they make mortgage payments. Why not? They can leave their portfolio intact because where is someone going to get $400,000 cash money so they can write that check? They're going to pull it from some kind of investment. They're going to pull it from a house they're, they're currently selling. It might be better to put that into um, an investment and letting the house be outside of that. A quick story, and I'll finish up the last bullet points on this slide. True story. And I actually got this phrase, what I'm getting ready to say, from, from my clients. So as a realtor and, and as a loan officer, when you go to a client's house, it's always a good idea to take a look around. You learn a lot. The neighborhood, the kind of cars they drive, the house they currently live in, or if they're renting or staying at a hotel, is it a Motel 6 or is it a Marriott? Little things can go a long way, so it doesn't always work. So here's my story. I pull into this house and there's two used vehicles in the driveway. 
it's a double wide manufactured home and they're wanting to do a a heckam refinance so you know i'm not prejudging it's just interesting to see i walk in the house is really nice it's looks like it's been recently remodeled and we do have credit requirements we do have income requirements and we have seasoning requirements so it's a relatively easy loan to qualify for but we have requirements so as i'm filling out the application uh, and they're very proud of their home they're they're bragging they've they've got a new air conditioner they remodeled they spent about twenty thousand dollars making the house really nice they purchased it for a hundred thousand dollars six months earlier and because i asked them that they i said where did you get the money because anything for a home purchase that they're refinancing now i have to find out i have to source the money going back a year so i said you know in a nice way where'd you get the money to buy this house and they both stopped they looked at each other and they said should we tell them and the, and the one of them said sure so he said, with a straight face they said we won the lottery okay remember two used cars manufactured home hundred thousand dollar purchase okay good for you so i proceed on and finally after i felt like built the rapport up i asked him so how much money did you win and they said 5.7 million and I took a step back. And so the next question is, why are you living in a double wide manufacturing home, manufactured home? And their answer was perfect. And this is where I got this phrase. They said to me that we feel that the money we can invest outside of our home has a chance of growing. And the money that we use to purchase this home, this home is going to appreciate whether it's paid for or not or it's going to depreciate because it's a manufactured home. We want, we feel that the, the $60,000 that we can pull out of this house, we feel we can invest it better than this home will do. And if the home goes up in value, we win. If the home goes down in value, well, we didn't lose. And if the $60,000 goes up in value, we win. And if we lose the 60,000, well, there's no mortgage payments. It was about cash and cash flow for these people. It wasn't about making a lot of money. It was just that they felt that they could do better on their own using a hack -em. So going back to financial planning, CFPs, financial planners feel the same way. So the last, the second to last bullet point, no monthly mortgage payments keeps cash flowing into retirement. Additional tax-free term or tenure payments can be used. Now this is mostly for a refinance hack -em, but it can be done with a purchase if a person overfunds the loan. If they put down a larger down payment than required, we can actually re refund their overpayment either in, in monthly payments, term meaning period of time or tenure meaning lifetime or lump sum if they decided they want that. So in other words, they can purchase a home using more than the required down payment and whatever they put in extra would actually go into a line of credit for them to use in the future. So for those who really don't want a mortgage balance, they can still do a HECM purchase the home, overfund the down payment, the excess money goes into a line of credit for emergencies. While the mortgage balance is smaller, which means they're not being charged interest on money they haven't borrowed yet, the money in their line of credit, let's call it a savings account with quotes, actually grows at about 5%. We'll get into that a little bit later as well. When a person truly understands how the HECM, the FHA HECM works, they love they love this program. They're excited about it versus uh, reverse mortgages. That's where the bank takes your house. Get that out of your thought. It's not what happens. We have about five minutes till break. So additional financial planners thoughts, not spending down the portfolio keeps the investments earning. The net worth of a client's estate is usually almost always enhanced, not reduced. Sounds a little bit odd. You're creating a debt and your estate's going up in value instead of down. You're being charged an interest rate of four and a half to five and a half, six percent, and your estate is actually growing in value instead of down. You've probably heard the terminology that the rich get richer by using other people's money, but sort of like the same concept. Certainly nothing is guaranteed, but financial planners have tested this time and time again, and it works. The tax de de deductibility of deferred mortgage interest reduces possible estate taxes or income taxes due by the heirs. Again, 
financial planners get excited about this because it is possible that upon the death of our clients and the heirs inherit the house along with the mortgage, along with all the deferred interest that's been accumulating, it is possible that the estate or even the heirs can use the deferred interest as a tax deduction. Now, this would be better explained by an accountant or a certified financial planner. But think about this, they inherit a $100,000 IRA, qualified money, meaning that it's never been taxed. And let's say they inherited $100,000 worth of deferred interest that's also never been deducted off income tax. Is it possible to offset the taxes owed to the heirs? This is where financial planners get really excited. I would highly encourage, especially the, the well-to-do clients, to definitely consult a CPA or a financial planner that understands the heck and how they, they marry nicely together. And remember this, as realtors, your primary job is to sell houses, not to sell loans. So the purpose of today's webinar is to help you sell more homes and do what's right by your clients. Think about this. If you help a 62 year old into a regular mortgage for 30 years, they're going to be 92 before they pay that darn thing off. Is that the right thing to do? The morals and ethics of the Heckam for Home Purchase? Maybe, maybe not. But look at the fourth bullet point. Most of traditional mortgage payments is interest, anyways, at least for the first 10 years. Think about that. The first 10 years of their mortgage payment, which means money coming out of their wallet, is going to interest. It's not even going to principal. In most cases, majority of the money is going to interest. There's nothing to gain from just paying interest payments. They sell the home in 10 years. Chances are the house is worth more. FHA, going, going back about 85, 90 years of government statistics, homes increase an average of 4% a year. In Florida, it's a little bit higher than that. In California, it's higher than that. But homes increased at about 4% a year. So chances are the house will be worth considerably more in 10 years. There's no guarantee, but chances are. But they've been making interest payments for the last 10 years, which has been going to interest. And I think we all once again agree with this. The second to last bullet points, the heirs usually sell the house they inherit, right? What do you do with one house and two kids? You sell it. So when someone says, I want to leave my house to my children, hmm. You know what the kids want? They want the money. They want the money. The kids are going to sell the house anyways. In most cases, parents are in their 80s, kids are in their 50s or even 60s. What, what does a kid do with the house that they've already thought about retirement where they want to live? They're going to sell it. So don't let that be a deterrent and keep your clients away from cash and cash flow in retirement. The last bullet point, seniors saving what they would normally spend in interest, which is the mortgage payment, grows the net worth cash outside the home. So if someone really was wanting to get into a $1,000 a month mortgage payment in retirement, why not do the heck them and take the $1,000 and either pay into the mortgage into the line of credit so they can get a refund later because that's how it works with the heck them or pay into their savings account so they can reach in at any time and pull the money back out. So let me, let me clarify that and then we'll take a break. A line of credit heck them your your clients have two options. They can do a closed end HECM, which is a fixed rate of interest, or they can do an open end HECM, which is an which is a line of credit adjustable rate mortgage. And if your clients contribute anything to the line of credit, it goes into the line of credit like a savings account. It's going to grow at about five percent interest, so they're earning growth on the money that that they're not being charged interest on, and it grows. And at any time that they want that line of credit, they can get it at no charge just by calling the servicer and say, hey, I've been making $1,000 mortgage payments for the last 60 months. I've got $60,000 plus my 5% growth. I'd like, to, I'd like to get a refund of that. And the servicer, the servicer will refund that at no charge. Wow. Okay, we'll continue with the CFP slides after the break. Let's take 10 minutes. Let's get started right on time. And the reason is because I cannot see you. You can see me. So if I'm beginning the webinar and you're out, I won't know. So see you in a moment.
All right, let's get started. So once you've identified a home buying senior, contact your HECM specialist, somebody who understands the HECM, not just anybody who says, yes, I can do reverse mortgage loans. You want to find somebody and our company offers them, the HECM Association can recommend, find somebody that will pre-qualify your prospect, verify their income, credit, assets, pull their credit, give a pre-approval letter. The HECM specialist will provide a list of approved FHA counselors for your clients to get counseled. As I mentioned before, one of the requirements is they have to go through a nonprofit HECM, I'm sorry, nonprofit housing counseling agency to get a certificate of HECM counseling. Once you've gotten a home buyer pre qualified, go dream home shopping. Write the purchase contract the way you would normally write it. Closing is three to four weeks. So the loan officer's responsibility, not yours, is, is to pull the credit. We're not using the credit score, but we are going to look at their, their, the way they've been paying their, their bills. We are going to be using monthly expenses that shows in their credit report. We're going to look at their income. They must have enough residual property outside of their credit report to be able to pay property charges, homeowners insurance, and so on. HECMs do not use the debt-to-income ratios like traditional financing does, the 42% rule kind of thing. We look at what shows up in their credit report and we do a calculation based on their income. We also add their property taxes, their homeowners insurance, their, their association dues. And if they're married, they need $886 worth of excess money in addition to what their monthly bills are. Now, again, we don't look at, we don't look at health insurance, life insurance, cell phone charges, cable bills, things that don't show up on a credit report, we're not taking that in cons into consideration when it comes to our debt to income ratio. Married people need 886, a single person needs 527 or 529. For an example, if a single person has $1,500 monthly income and they have $900 worth of monthly credit report bills, that gives them more than $529 they qualify. As long as they're credit report doesn't show any uh, willingness or or ability not to be able to pay their debts. In other words, they're not behind on their car payment, they're not behind on their homeowners or their property taxes or homeowners insurance. They cannot be delinquent on federal debt, student loans, FHA, VA loans, IRS taxes. Government does not like to be defaulted on. They can give a hall pass for some credit reports that don't show up perfectly, but if they're if they're defaulted on a student loan, not going to happen for this. Governments don't does do not want to lend out more money for people who defaulted on them. So, pension, Social Security, annuity income, possibly income from from investments. The realtor's responsibility is the sales contract. I'm going to say this very clearly. Let the HECM specialist sell the loan. Let realtors sell the house. You sell the house. I want you to have enough information to be able to sell the sizzle of the HECM program, but not too much information to try to sell the program. Get the customer, your client, excited about the HECM and let the HECM specialist provide the sizzle. You focus on the house. I, I jokingly say that I, if, if someone were to call me and say, I want to buy a home with a HECM, I'm not going to put them in my car 
and drive them around town and show them houses. I'm going to refer them to you. So when someone calls you and says, I want to buy a house with a Heckam, give them the Heckam specialist phone number and let us sell the program, pros, good, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So sales contract, fully executed contract must be provided before we can even print the loan application. So we need to get the Heckam counseling done as soon as you've identified a borrower. Having said that, I don't want you to be afraid of the sales contract. Fill it out the way you would normally fill it out. Check off the FHA box. If you forget, we'll do an addendum. We must have an appraisal, but a contingency for a home inspection also is required. Appraisal is the value of the home. A home inspection would be, you know, what's wrong with the home kind of thing. So we don't require a home inspection, but it is a contingency must be must be allowed. FHA amenatory clause and real estate certification forms. That basically one of those two forms. One form is to make sure the borrower knows that the house appraises for less than the contract price that we're going to be using the lower of the two. It also gives the buyer the opportunity to renegotiate the sales contract if the appraisal comes in too low. That just makes sense. And the other form is to make sure that what is written is gospel and what is told verbally is hearsay. So we want to make sure everything is in writing. It's very important to have the Loan, uh, loan application and the sales contract, they all come together as, as are in writing pieces. Typically, the buyer chooses the title company in, in our world. And the reason we want that is because this Heckam Loans calculations are different than traditional financing. I know usually the seller picks the title company, but if we can get the buyer to choose it, i.e. The, the lender to choose it, it would be better for the overall process. You as realtors want to sell homes and have on-time closings. And of course, the buyer does too and the seller does too. So let's not mess it up with a title company that doesn't know how to calculate the fees. Some of the things that that title companies don't understand is that we use the HUD-1, not the settlement statement. We don't have TRID. The calculations are different. Typically, fees are based on the appraised value, the contract price versus the loan amount. There's just so many things that are different. I'm not going to lose a deal over, over a title company, but at the same time, I don't want you to lose a, a closing because someone chose the wrong title company. So let the lender choose if at all possible. Anything that needs to be changed, we'll do an addendum. So once again, the most important thing is to get the customer to sign on the dotted line to get them committed to the house so we can have a real, sell, real estate transaction in process. Very important. Anything that needs to be fixed, we can, we can fix it with an addendum. When it comes to checking off the FHA box, it says, what is the down payment? What is the financing? Usually 50-50 works, but on the pre-approval form, it should say, at least our company offers, where it says based on their age, based on certain factors, this is the down payment based on the purchase price and so on. So the transaction summary, this is sort of exciting to see some percentages. And again, I'm gonna go over this relatively fast. The first number to know is that the average age for a Heckam borrower is about 74. We can go down as low as 62 for a borrower and down to age 18 for a non-borrowing spouse. Keyword is spouse. If they're not married, they're not a spouse. They're a friend. We can go as high as 100 and whatever. That doesn't matter. But the non-borrower must be a spouse. So two brothers, they're not married. Mother, daughter, not married. Two men that are legally married, fine, but they have to be legally married. Two best friends or two sworn enemies have to be 62 and above. So here's some numbers. Let's start with a $200,000 home. Now we can go as low as $50,000 and maybe even lower than that, but that's typically a, where it starts not making sense for a borrower to buy a house with maybe a $35,000 down payment to buy a $50,000 house. Maybe they should find another 15000 and not have any closing costs, right? So that's really the rule of thumb. We can go as high as we want. There's proprietary reverse mortgages that will go as high as $10 million. But look at the middle yellow line. 74 is the average age for a Heckam borrower. We're looking at six, a 72. Down payment is about 52% plus closing cost. So I like to say, how many $200,000 homes could you sell, Mr. Realtor? if all homes were 52% for the average borrower of 72, 103,000. How many $200,000 homes could you sell for $104,000 plus closing costs? And the answer is all of them. 
what's interesting is the percentage is about the same regardless of of the value of the home so take a look at the difference between 200,000 and the next slide which is 300,000 and the percentages are about the same there's 200,000 there's 300,000 so you can see that the age 67 changes a little bit from 53 to 54% but the down payment is right about that plus closing cost. Interest rates are around 4.75, some lenders charge more. The problem with the higher interest rate is that the down payment becomes higher. The way FHA has designed this program is the higher the interest rate, the lower the down, uh, higher the down payment. The lower the interest rate, the lower the down payment. So the company that I'm employed by, which is called Heckam Senior Home Financing, tries to bring the interest rate as low as possible the way to buy down the way to get the interest rate low is to buy down the interest rate which is why origination fees are introduced the fha initial mip or pmi is two percent of the appraised value up to seven hundred and twenty six thousand. so it could be as high as fourteen thousand. the lender's fee the origination fee the the points whatever you want to call it could be uh, up to six thousand dollars and Third-party closing costs run about 2% approximately. So 2% on 300,000 is about six grand. So closing costs aren't cheap, but when you do the math, there's no mortgage payments. Interest rates are reasonable. You could make mortgage payments. Um, and the origination fee can be used to buy down the interest rate. So we do that. There's a $400,000 house, $500,000 house, $600,000 house. And let's stop here for a moment. Look at this age 72 how many six hundred thousand dollar homes could you sell if all six hundred thousand dollar homes were three hundred thirteen thousand on sale this week and this week only plus closing costs again all of them think about that for let's just say three hundred and forty thousand dollars all inclusive you could sell a six hundred thousand dollar home and your commission is based on the purchase price not the loan amount now, the highest we can consider is 726525 It doesn't mean that's the highest house value you can sell. It just means that that's the highest FHA is going to consider the house to be worth. So on a 72-year-old, 52% down plus closing costs is approximately $377,000. And let me say this one more time in a different way. If you wanted to sell a $750,000 house, yes, you can with the Heckam. FHA is going to consider the house to be worth 726. We're going to require the down payment based on that. And then anything above 726, in this case, $24,000, will be paid dollar for dollar by your client in addition to the 377 in this example. If you want to sell a million dollar house, $377,000 down based on a 72 year old, the youngest spouse's age, by the way, plus the difference between 726 and a million dollars. So for approximately $600,000, $750,000, whatever that number is, you're going to sell a million dollar home. So the loan benefit is calculated on the lesser of the price value, lending limit, or the contract price. This is very different than traditional FHA loans. Most FHA loan lending limit is in the $200,000 to $300,000 range, where we're up to seven twenty-six. dollars Once again, whatever you think you know about traditional financing, especially FHA lending, FHA HECMs are different. So a couple of things that I did discuss was a lot of realtors will use this as a supplement or a way to to give them a steady paycheck. Imagine this, you as a realtor, if you're 62 and above, could do a HECM, set up a monthly payment to you, let's just say $1,000 a month, and you could have a steady income using the, these funds. And then when you get a sale, you can repay the HECM loan. A lot of salespeople have paychecks that do this, and then we have a bad month or maybe no closing month, then we have a great month, maybe a great month, and then maybe a, a not so great month. Wouldn't it be nice to have a steady paycheck of a couple thousand dollars a month using a HECM, and then you'd always replenish it when sales happen. It's tax-free income. HECM proceeds are tax-free. So when you get a sale, and you get a big check, you can actually pay back your HECM loan and potentially the interest that you're paying on that HECM loan is tax deductible at the end of the year. 
And I say talk to your CPA because there's all sorts of rules with that. A lot of a lot of retirees, especially those that are those that are working mostly, will actually use the HECM loan to get tax-free income to delay their Social Security check. Imagine that. For every year you can delay your Social Security, you get an 8% pay raise. Plus, if you're 62 and still working and you make too much money, I think it's around 17,000, the IRS is going to tax your Social Security at a at 50%. So delaying Social Security and or, or or keeping your income such where you don't have to pay taxes on Social Security until you hit full retirement age is very important. HECM loans allow that to happen in a much easier way. Sometimes your clients want traditional financing, but their underwriting doesn't quite allow them to. Use this as a way to help people qualify. If they insist on making mortgage payments, we will take their money. And if they want their money back, as long as they do the line of credit HECM, we will refund it to them at no charge. So even people who want to make payments, the HECM loan makes a lot of sense because it gives them the option of making payments for the rest of their life. Or maybe they want to make payments early on and then quit making them later in life. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. I want to say one more time that Although the HECM loan is very specific on condos, they have to be FHA approved, the proprietary reverse mortgages, which are just as safe, nearly as safe, almost as safe as the HECM, it has the non-recourse feature, it has reasonable interest rates, can go, can, can be done on condos for as low as $400,000. So maybe if you have a condo that we can't get FHA approved, maybe the, the proprietary reverse mortgage, the jumbo, would be a nice fit. There's 10,000 baby boomers turning 62 every single day in this country, every single day. There's 1,000 people every day moving to Florida. I like to jokingly say they're all seniors, but in reality, they're all ages. But there's 10,000 potential new customers for us, and there's a lot of people moving to Florida every year. The population in Lee County is 31% senior citizens. Of all the counties combined in Florida, 24% of them are 62 and above. Now I've eliminated the people that are under age 18 because, because they don't buy homes. So 24% of the home buying population are potential customers. According to NAR, 35% of all home sales in Florida last year were sold to people that are 62 and above. Think about that, one out of three customers are 62 and above in Florida. If you don't sell to seniors, then you're missing one third of the customers. 40% of the U.S. population over age 60, and they're planning on, or when they turn age 60 plus, they're planning on moving. Think about that. They're all coming to Florida, jokingly. They're all coming to Florida. So if, if, if you have 40% people that are thinking about moving in retirement, coming to Florida, isn't that a great opportunity to jump into the senior market? 77% of the nation's wealth is controlled by seniors. Those are cash buyers. Those are cash buyers. I've had realtors say, I only sell homes cash. Well, imagine this, you've got a customer with a $400,000 checkbook willing to write you a check. That's awesome. You're going to have a $400,000 sale next week. Or you could sell them a $700,000 house for the same $400,000. Earn your commission, get a, get a higher commission, help the customer into the house they really wanted, the golf course, the spa home, the pool home, the, the waterfront home, the, the gated community home. The house they really wanted is probably more than $400,000. Think about that. You take them to a $400,000 neighborhood, you're looking for houses, the house they really want is $500,000. What do you do? Do you get them $100,000 financing? Do they reach into their savings and, and deplete their, their nest egg even further? Or do you show them into a HECM loan? They put down $250,000, $275,000 and buy the $500,000 home and still have money to put back in their savings. 86% of seniors want to age in their own home. What does that mean? Well, you can help them go from a, a bad neighborhood to a from a two-story house to a home that may be in disrepair into a brand new home, maybe a townhome, a condo, so on, into a home that they could would really enjoy, possibly put money in their pocket and help them with an easier retirement life in a single-story home so they can age in place. A better retirement lifestyle for the senior equals a happy client and more referrals. Seniors socialize with seniors. The Heckin for Home Purchase is absolutely changing how baby boomers purchase their homes and relocate in retirement. You being here today and learning about this puts you in an amazing position. Ideas for promoting the Heckin for Home Purchase include helping retirees right size as opposed to downsizing into a maintenance free lifestyle such as a townhome, maybe a condo, villa, patio home, 
perhaps with no out-of-pocket cost. Let's explain this further. All of our lives, we're talking, we've been told that when we retire, we're going to downsize. Kids say that. Mom and dad says that. We say that. In reality, most people want to right-size. They want to possibly get a bigger home, certainly a nicer home. They've worked 50 years of their lives to accumulate something. They don't want to downsize into, into something that's too small. They've got a lot of stuff. So help them right-size into a single-story home on the water, on the golf course, with the pool, a nice patio home, something that, that is possibly maintenance-free. Help them right-size. It might be a more expensive property, but it's the right if, if it's the right thing to do. Keeping in mind morals and ethics of this program, as you as a realtor, just because you can sell a $700,000 house doesn't mean you should. Higher property taxes, higher homeowners association, insurance, and so on. Maybe the right thing to do is get them into a, the same value home, but using a heckam so they have money in their pocket and no mortgage payments. Moving seniors from a manufactured community into a retirement home with all the bells and whistles, 55 plus lifestyle for an example, site built homes typically increase in value and typically manufactured homes decrease in value. So you can actually help someone's net worth and wind up making one or two sales out of it. The realtor, realtor advantage, real poor, the heck I'm for home purchase will, will, will separate you from your competition. 97%, as I said before, of realtors don't understand this program, but you do. The informed realtor, you, increases your professional reputation and new doors open. True story. Customer called me moving down from the Carolinas. They thought they were going to buy a home in the Carolinas. They were there. They had picked out a home, and they had heard about the Heckam. They had made a decision. They're buying a, a home with a Heckam. And then their daughter from Florida called and said, Mom and Dad, you got to come to Florida. You got your grandkids here. We're here. You can live close to us. There's a lifestyle community down the street. Long story short, the mother called me, said, we want to move to Florida. I see on, on Google that you offer the Heckam. And I said, yes, I'll refer you to a realtor. She said, no, my daughter has a realtor. And here is where you will win because you have been to this class. The customer called the realtor explained she wanted to heck them. The realtor had no idea what the heck a heck them was. The client explained what it was. It um, was brought up. This is a type of reverse mortgage. The realtor says it sounds like a scam and the realtor did not get that purchase. The customer called me back and says, yes, I'll take that realtor referral from you now. I gave her one that was knowledgeable in that area and that realtor made a sale. So you knowing about this program separates you from the competition. You are better than everyone else because now you can help your senior home buyer. 24% of the people that live in Florida are age 62 and above, and 35% of all homes that were sold last year, according to NAR, were sold to people 62 and above. Being in the senior market and living in Florida is what you must do if you want to maximize your opportunities. Now, speaking of two sales, as I mentioned before, help your clients sell their existing home that's in that's too big, too expensive, bad neighborhood, disrepair, and updating their dwelling into their dream home, into the house they really would like to live in. Get more listings by using the half price concept, the half down tools. We'll get into that in a moment. Advertising homes for half down and no monthly mortgage payments will increase your call volume, thus more sales. Marking the heck of a home purchase will create new opportunities and will enhance your commissions. Speaking of increasing retirement income, Imagine this, helping someone, you know, let me, let me back up with this story. You go on a listing appointment and the customer is older and she says, my, my spouse, my husband has recently died. This home is too big, too expensive, but talking to her, you realize that she really doesn't want to move. Yes, the home is too big. It's too expensive. It costs her a lot. Houses may be paid for or almost paid for. And she says, yes, I have my favorite grocery store, my church and my and my my neighbors. I just can't mow the yard. I can't upkeep the house. It's too much in cleaning. She, but she really doesn't want to move. And if she did move, what would she do with all of her stuff? And you want to get a listing. Well, maybe maybe the right thing to do, the moral and ethic way to do is is suggest a heckam refi and get nothing from this other than goodwill. Or maybe. And maybe that's the right choice. Or maybe you could help them buy a rental home. 
In other words, do a Heckam refi on their current home, take some of that cash and buy a, a rental home. Now, somebody can manage it for this, this client. They don't have to because they're not typically landlords. But if they can get $100,000 and they bought a $150,000 and they bought a rental home that they could rent and someone else manages it, they could get income from that house. They have no payments on their primary home. The Heckam refi was done on their primary home. They would have no payments on the rental home because they paid cash for it. They'd have it managed so it's not a headache. They'd have income from that rental home. No payments and more income. Net worth, just increase. Number two suggestion. Help your clients, clients buy a duplex, triplex, or a quadplex. Buy a duplex. They live in one side, they run out the other side. No mortgage payments on either side. Sell their existing home, help them buy a triplex, quadplex. Live in one, run out the other three or four using the Heckman for Home Purchase. No mortgage payments, rental income. Net worth increased, cash flow increases. Wow. The ethical and moral implications. So never upsell a home just because you can. They may not be able to afford it. Remember, there's home maintenance costs, homeowners insurance, property taxes, association dues. Don't have a client downsize just because the word downsize has been their vocabulary for years. Many seniors don't want to downsize. They may just want to right size. Again, the golf course community. Do the right thing. Your senior clients need to be aware of all the home buying financing options available to them. This includes VA programs, FHA loans, conventional mortgage, cash buys, cash, cash purchases, first time home buyer programs, rehab loans, 203K, they're called USDA financing if it's in the country. Let's talk about first time home buyer. So first time home buyer, for an example, is somebody who has not owned a home in the last three years that would like to purchase a home but they don't have enough down payment. So maybe there's a government agency, it could be a charity, it could be a, a grant money, it could be could be a interest-free loan, it could be a could be a forgivable loan. There's all sorts of first-time home buyer programs. And basically in a, in a sense what it is it's it's some government agency for the simplest of, of explanations giving a down payment assistance to somebody who wants to buy a house. And that down payment assistance could be forgivable or it could be paid at the end. The HECM could be considered a lifetime home buyer program. Now, the HECM Association has a lifetime home buying, buying seminar, a, a seminar in a box, to allow you, the realtor, to conduct a seminar called Lifetime Home Buyer, where this government loan, HECM, provides down payment assistance to people that are 62 and above that have a large down payment. So they can buy this house and have no monthly mortgage payments. Think about that. The federal government, FHA, has a HECM insured program to give a lump sum amount of payment in the form of a loan that doesn't require payment to a senior who has another big lump sum of money where they can combine the money to give to the seller to have no required mortgage payments. This lifetime home buyer program is a loan that accumulates interest but is due upon the sale of the house sometime in the future. Lifetime home buyer. We'll talk about that offline. So what are some options for using disposable cash? Gifts to children, legacy, college funding for grandkids, for their kids, help children purchase a home, health care, long-term care, long-term care insurance, transportation, new car, pay off some debts, remodel home. The primary reason that people do a HECM or any kind of a no payment mortgage is to get out of debt, to pay off a mortgage, to extinguish a mortgage payment, to extinguish credit cards. The number two reason is to increase additional, have some additional cash flow. Now they're definitely getting cash flow by paying off debt, but I'm talking about having additional cash flow. Number three reason is do some remodeling, a new roof, uh, upgrade their kitchen and so on. I do have a client, actually two clients that were boyfriend and girlfriend, se live separately, both did a heck them. They were dating and they both on a world cruise they were gone for i think three months that's what they wanted to do they wanted to go have fun see the world helping seniors have the best home at an affordable cost feels great 
There are too many seniors with part-time jobs. Would you like to have fries with that? How many times have you walked into a Walmart and they say, you know, welcome to Walmart? Are they working because they want to? God bless them. Are they working because they have to? You as a realtor have the ability to say, we have a program that can help you have no payments on your on your home. And whether you help them with a Heckam refi or you help them into a new home for one lump sum and no, no required mortgage payments might be the difference between them working and not working. Quality of life should not decrease with age. Agree? Just because you get older, your quality of life should not decrease. The biggest fear of our retirees is not dying. It's not getting old. It's running out of money before you die and before you get old. The number one fear of our retirees is running out of money. Think about that. You have the ability to help prevent that. Because not having a house payment in the last 30 years of a senior's life will have a staggering effect on their quality of life and because you care. So we're not done. We're not done. We're 30 minutes away. And actually, we'll be done in 20 minutes. Actually, we'll be done in less than 20 minutes. So we'd love to, to give this presentation to others live in person or, or via webinar. Hopefully, this has been beneficial to you, webinar. Heckam Association is a nonprofit trade trade association helping realtors understand more about the Heckam for home purchase. So let's talk about marketing. Maximize your marketing power using the Heckam for home purchase. So our phrase here at Heckam Association is let's get the conversation started. So once again, your job as a realtor is to sell the home, not sell the loan. I'm not going to put a person in my car and take them around and show them homes. And I don't want you to get into a three hour presentation on, on how awesome the Heckam for home purchase is. I want you to sell the sizzle or, or sell the, the, the facts and let us sell the sizzle. Let us let us sell the sell the loan if it's the right for them. So we have a website called halfcosthomes.com. We have ways to get the conversation started. And one of our ways, hopefully this is not too close, because so I can't see me, is buy this home with Heckin for purchase, flexible monthly mortgage payments and optional monthly mortgage payments. And there's no phone number on here because we want them to call you. This will typically be next to your sign. These are just some of the tools that we have to get the conversation started. Listing flyers, our marketing department will do this. There's no charge. We want to help you sell more homes. Here's uh, some example of prices, a 75-year-old down to a 62-year-old for this house that is listed for 250000 Down payment could be 130000 if they're 75. We also have ability to, or you have the ability to add some special wording within your MLS listing to get the conversation started, ask how a senior can purchase this home for one large down payment and have no required monthly mortgage payments afterwards. So uh, we'll get that wording to you. We have all sorts of social media things. Once again, the Heckam Association's mission is to get the word out about the Heckam program. So allow us to help you get the word out. Benefit for you is that you're a realtor, you're gonna sell more homes. Benefit for us is we get the word out on, on the Heckam. Isn't it sad that this program has been around for almost 10 years and 97% of the realtors don't know about it? Isn't that sad? So let us help you change that dynamic. So there's also uh, Heckam for Purchase brochures that can be put around town. We have the, the display boxes, the purchase, we can provide these to you at no charge. Get the conversation started. Here's the approved wording for MLS. Obviously, the Words are no cost, but you can actually put this in your MLS. It meets all the compliance issues. It is age discrimination because we're allowed to. You're allowed to because this is a age discriminatory product. And discriminatory sounds like a bad word, but it's not in this case. Ask how a buyer age 62 can purchase this home, the one that you're listed, with one large down payment and no monthly mortgage payments for life. Pretty cool, huh? Halfcosthomes.com. Write that down. Go visit that website later. There's a calculator there. Can help people understand what their down payment is based on their age, based on their zip code, based on the, well, actually the state of Florida, it's all the same. And they need to you know, find a home or have at least have a home value in mind. They can go to various sites to find homes, obviously your, your site. 
And once you've completed this class and we give you your three hours of CEs, you are now a knowledgeable realtor. We can actually put you on this website at no charge and list you as a knowledgeable realtor. So the last paragraph on this, on this slide talks about you being a knowledgeable realtor. We can also get you a, the HECM Association, there's a, there's a cost for this, but we can get you a certified HECM specialist designation, CHS. There's a test that you have to complete uh, to pay a fee, but now you can be a certified HECM specialist and, and really promote what I like to call half cost homes. Five major components of this website. Again, there's no charge for this website, just knowledge base, and you now have the knowledge. HECM education, the home search engine, uh, it says coming soon, but in reality, we've been, uh, a lot of the search engine websites uh, don't like to share, so that may not be coming soon. Heckam cal Calculator, locate you, the knowledgeable realtor, and a lead, uh, lead capture form on almost every page to help you generate more leads. Thank you for participating. And I really wish I could be answering questions right now, but it is what it is, and so glad that you can learn more about the Heckam for Home Purchase. Once again, my name is Tim Linger, L-I-N-G-E-R. I am a certified reverse mortgage professional, one of only 150 in the whole nation. I've been doing this for almost 20 years, certified senior advisor. I'm the broker owner of a broker shop. We service Florida and a couple other states. We are extremely knowledgeable in the Heckam world, and I appreciate your time. So I am going to try to put on a couple of examples. The seminar is officially over. You've earned your three hours. I'm going to try to put on a, a couple of homes that we have sold recently using the Heckam for Home Purchase, just so you can see some of the values from the low end to the high end. It may not work, and if you're watching, that's great. And if you're not, that's okay too, because it may not work. We'll try. I think it's going to work. I think. All these are Heckam homes. Every single one of these was sold using a Heckam for home purchase. We have hundreds, by the way, but these are just some. These are actual houses that we've used. All walks of life from townhome own, town home owners duplex, single families, big houses, small homes, two-story homes. Nice homes, big homes, hand-drawn homes. That was a Ryan home, by the way. Townhomes. homes. 
There you go, Orange County. Once again, thank you all. This concludes the CE class.